In 2009, the poet Seamus Heaney chose two poems to read when he was presented with the biannual David Cohen Prize for Literature. One of the poems is simply titled A Drink of Water, and in it, Heaney, drawing from his vivid memories of growing up in rural Ireland, writes in exquisite sonnet stanza form. A Drink of Water she came every morning to draw water, like an old bat staggering up the field. The pump's whooping cough, the bucket's clatter and slow diminuendo as it filled, announced her. I recall her grey apron, the pocked white enamel of the brimming bucket, and the treble creak of her voice, like the pump's handle. Nights when a full moon lifted past her gable, it fell back through her window and would lie into the water set on the table, where I have drip dipped to drink again, to be faithful to the admonishment on her cup. Remember the giver, fading off the lip. The sonnet conjures a powerful word picture of an old woman's laborious daily journey to collect water from the nearby well. With Heaney, we seem almost to hear the pump's whooping cough as the handle is cranked round, and then the musical diminuendo as water fills the clattering bucket. Heaney's sonnet evokes the old woman's presence with clarity and intricate observance. We see her old apron and the rust-pocked white enamel bucket. And with Heaney, we are aware of our slight impatience at her constant presence on the verges of our lives, the dilapidation of her house, her stagger past the decency and neatness of our ordered life. And yet it is in the final lines that Heaney catches us unawares. The poet breaks down the fourth wall by involving himself in the sonnet as he dips and drinks the well water from the old woman's cup, and in an unexpected reversal, he reminds us not of what he offered the woman, namely the free use of the well for her daily bucket of water, but of the supreme giver. The admonishment painted on her old cup, presumably in archaic script. Remember the giver. A reminder with every precious sip to remember the one from whom all gifts are given. In a moment with the poet, our eyes are drawn away from the well's dark drop, the trapped sky, the smell of dank moss and cold, ice cold water, to the one who is creator the one who hovered above the chaos of the deep, the one who gives, and gives in abundance, who does not grudgingly offer the use of his well, and then watch with daily irritation the slow staggering journey to collect the water. Rather, this is the one who is the very wellspring of life and light, who was from the beginning, the one through whom the Father created time and space. The Creator Christ, who is also the Recreator, the source of new creation as well as the old, the one in whom all creation is sustained and held together, is found in St John's Gospel, sitting beside Jacob's well, on the edge of a Samaritan village, with the noonday sunshine beating down and an outcast woman engaging him in conversation. In that historically rich place, in that place of ancient, deep-rooted divisions, Jesus, the incarnate Word of God, is present. The Giver himself is present to the Samaritan woman, who, in a similar way to Hina's Irish woman, many centuries later, would have come like an old bat staggering up, the, up to the well, her feet knowing every step 
of the weary way. The treble creak of her voice, filled with the burdening weight of a life, brimmed full with grief and disappointment. She was a disturbance and a discord in her Samaritan village, a woman with a past, someone who chooses to come alone to the well because she has suffered the jibes and coldness of her neighbours once too often. Seamus Heaney, ever a master of understatement, offers us in his poem the chance to pause, to look at the old woman in a different way, to see her as one who drank from a cup on whose worn and faded lip words of an archaic script reminded her with every sip to remember the giver. In just such a way, St John wonderfully paints us a picture of a dialogue we could not have pre-planned between the incarnate word of God and the outcast Samaritan woman. The conversation is sinuous and sharp, the parry and thrust of words. For the first time in years, the woman finds herself seen not for what she has done, not for how she lives, but for who she is. People are meant to live, wrote one theologian, in an ongoing conversation with God, speaking and being spoken to. And therein lies the subtlety of what Jesus is offering to the woman. This gift of living water is not the gift the woman initially seems to believe it is. No, she is not going to miraculously have her thirst quenched for evermore. Yes, she will still have to toil out to the well to collect water for her physical needs. But by believing in Jesus, by allowing his recreating power to cleanse, refresh and renew her very soul, she can run back to her village. She can look into the faces of the men and women who have averted their eyes from her and whose gaze she has deliberately avoided for decades. She can run to them with an overflow of joy, holding in her cupped hands the invitation Come and see the one who told me everything I ever did. The Samaritan woman goes back to her village and her renewed life resounds with a new history. I've met somebody who saw me whole, who saw everything about me and somehow showed me how I could really come home to myself to the centre of who I am in God's eyes. She becomes the model disciple, the one who not only accepts the gift, but who immediately shares it, who remembers and imitates the generosity of the giver. She is indeed the one who with every sip remembers the giver. In her encounter with Jesus Christ, we are assured that no gathering in God's presence is random. The astonishing new reality in this mighty flow of the Spirit is how the recreating Christ is bringing together diverse and isolated streams of life and creating not an intricate waterway, but a mighty living tide of faith. In the ebb and flow of our lives, in their swiftness and strength, in the depth and clarity of what we share, Jesus will be recognised as we remember his invitation that wherever we are today, in whatever place, he is offering us the gift of living water, an abundant spring of water, welling up to eternal life.